What's up, YouTube? Anchor Jackalope here, Rob Ricks. I'm here with the first of what I hope to be a long series of interviews that I do with different people. I have a very special guest here. He's a really good friend of mine. I've known him for several years, probably in the neighborhood of 15, no, probably 17, 18 years. Um, I had the fortune of working with him in various companies. I moved from Southern California, where he was based, to the Bay Area, and then from the Bay Area, moved to Utah, as you guys know. And then, as fate would have it, he ended up moving to Utah, too. And as he moved here, we did some collaboration work, things of that nature. And um, he has been instrumental in educating me on a lot of different levels. And so what I want to do is I've been pushing him and pressuring him for quite some time to start a video series, to start getting on YouTube and sharing information because I'd be on the phone with him, we'd be chit-chatting and I'd say, hey, you know, what do you think about this? And I'd have a preconceived notion of what it was and he'd be like, oh, 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 Rob, no, that, I'm sorry, that's that's not right. Um, let me let me explain it to you. And he'd, he'd explain it to me, you know, in a very patient, you know, way. And then, you know, sometimes I get a little offended. Well, that's, I don't think that's correct. And then I'd go and I'd do my due diligence and I'd research and I'd say, son of a bitch, he's right. Damn it. Ah, he knows it. So there has been many, many times where I thought, okay, that, that's just gotta be wrong. Let me look this up. And he's probably one of the most knowledgeable guys that I know. I'm at the point in my relationship with him where if I ask him something, unless I know for a fact that he's mistaken on maybe one key point, I say, yeah, he's probably right, but I still look and double check. But anyway, um, his name is Cyrus Noriella. He's a really good friend of mine. I'm going to do kind of a Q&A with him. We're not quite sure where we're going to go with this. We might end up going down some rabbit holes. He is very knowledgeable in different aspects of uh, religion, um, politics, uh, finance, different different foundational pieces of things that I will be talking with you guys about. So I'm going to have him. So don't freak out. There's going to be somebody else sitting in the chair here, but don't freak out. And now you'll probably hear me off camera asking a question, or maybe there will be a question that will show up and then he'll go ahead and answer it. And we'll see, uh, we'll see where the rabbit hole goes because, uh, some of the conspiracies that, uh, I've alluded to, uh, he and I share and, and have deep conversations with. And, uh, hopefully this won't freak you out. So, we'll see what happens. All right, guys. Hey, what's up, YouTubers? Uh, from the Angry Jackalope channel. Uh, it's a privilege to be here and be introduced by the great Rob Ricks over here. Uh, Mr. Angry Jackalope himself. Uh, but, Rob, I just wanted to thank you for that warm introduction. And, uh, folks, this is my first video take. I don't really do a whole lot of videos. So if you see me being a little nervous because I'm looking at a little tiny dot here in, for a camera or an eye, uh, it's a little bit uncomfortable. I usually like to engage with humans, but luckily I've got Rob on the side here and he'll help me through this. One of the basic problems I see with how people think about entrepreneurism is steeped in how long we as a society have promoted the idea of employment. And so entrepreneurism is looked at as some, some kind of an alternative to employment. Whereas, you know, entrepreneurism is, it's not a, a job title. It's not a vocation. It's not um, necessarily a, a craft, although you could probably look at it uh, that way in some respect because, you know, some people are very good at coming up with ideas and starting businesses and knowing how to take things to the next level. But entrepreneurism is really the idea of sovereignty, of being your own person, of being a person of freedom, of free will. And that is a concept that is as old as the Bible um, and goes back to our earliest beginnings and really what, um, you know, we are as human beings. You know, you can uh, look at other forms of life on the planet. Um, I like to use the ant colony as a, as a good uh, contrast. Um, you know, everybody has their position in, in that ant colony. Everybody has a certain job. In fact, there are certain ants that are born 
to be certain types of uh, tasks and other ants are born to do other types of tasks and so but human beings aren't like that human beings are not popped out of the womb uh, like a cyborg and being given some kind of a robotic task and an assignment in society instead we find our own way of doing things we are creative we have interests and motivations, and those are the things that drive us and make us do the things that we really want to do. And that's what really entre entrepreneurism really is, if you do want to contrast it to employment. Most employee situations are what people have to do, not necessarily what they want to do. Um, yeah, you know, that's a, a good question. It's uh, going to make me uh, think a little bit deeply about it. But, um, you know, everybody has doubts and everybody has fears. And uh, you will question yourself as to whether or not you're doing the right thing. And to complicate things, you're going to have external uh, forces at work, other people, family members who also have doubts. Um, you know, it, it's really a matter of having some confidence in yourself, knowing clearly what your vision is, and um, having some faith. Having that faith that when you do your part, um, things are going to work out. And one of the things that I like to use as an analogy is one of a farmer. You know, the farmer uh, takes a seed and he prepares the soil and he plants that seed and he takes care of the, that seed. He watches it germinate and actually grow and, um, and he doesn't know for sure if this thing is going to uh, pop up the way it's supposed to and, and uh, it's going to bear fruit. Uh, he's going through all of this labor and he's waiting uh, for a particular period of time to transpire before that fruit is actually going to be there. Um, but you know, it's a matter of faith. It's a matter of faith that if I'm going to do the right things, if I'm going to be humble enough to say that I'm going to allow the market to tell me what it really needs, um, and I'm going to be flexible enough uh, to say, you know, maybe what, how I thought this was going to initially work out isn't exactly how it's going to work out, so I'm going to make the moves and modifications. It's not about my ego. It's not about, um, you know, this idea that has to happen exactly the way that I dictated from the beginning. Um, and just have faith that if you're going to do the right things, uh, the right things are going to come back to you. Um, and also, I would say, being driven by a purpose. Not being driven by, you know, money, for example, or things that are just really um, an offshoot of the efforts that you're putting forward. Time point of view. Uh, well, you know, you spend the t your time on the things you're interested in. So it's very important that whatever business or venture you decide to get into, that it's something that holds your interest, that it's a very compelling um, subject matter to you. Um, time is, is something you always seem to never have enough of. But the reality is, is some of us are more efficient with our time than others. And that's really going to be determined by what you're passionate about, what, it, what are the things that you're working on, how attached you are to your vision, uh, to seeing it coming to fruition. And time really flies by um, when you're in that mode. But time has a way, and I got this from my father actually, but time has a way of expanding for the need that you have. And what he really meant by that is, you know, we all get the same 24 hours in a day. Nobody gets a lock on more time than anybody else. But somehow we find the time for the things that are important to us. And there seems to be always be enough time <laughs> to get those things done. All right, guys, so that was Cyrus and Cyrus is one of the, the folks that I feel pretty comfortable talking to about business and I've had a lot of different ventures you guys knew about uh, the different things that I've done. 
you know, one of the things that he touched on <clears throat> is vitally important be able to um, find a way to take your passion, kind of drive you, that, that uh, give you that energy to do things. And I'm reminded about 50 Cent. When 50 Cent was making a movie, he was also making a soundtrack. And so one of the interviewers uh, asked him, dude, how the hell can you do that? You're filming a crazy schedule, and then you're also producing music. When do you sleep? Because I don't. So that's a perfect example of somebody who says, you know what, these objectives are important to me. I'm going to make time to get it done. And a lot of times we give ourselves excuses to not get the important stuff done, like working out as an example. Oh, I don't have any time. Really, but you have enough time to go watch five episodes of your favorite TV show, but you don't have any time to squeak in that 30-minute exercise or whatever. So from a business point of view, it's the exact same concept with discipline, focus, uh, believing, having faith, hope, things of that nature. These are all aspects of things we're going to talk about in more detail. But what I wanted to do with this episode was really let you guys see somebody who has been mentoring me for the better part of probably about six, seven years. Um, and it was funny because even though I've known him for a longer amount of time, it's only been in a shorter period of time where we've actually gotten to know each other on a deeper level. And uh, in a way where I'm learning things. And that's the other thing. You know, this is a separate topic, but it's worth mentioning here because it's relevant. You surround yourself with good people, you get good things. You surround yourself with shitty people, you get shitty things, right? So I have purposely been in the last few years weeding out the bad aspects of things in my life and trying to bring in more of the good things. And Cyrus is one of those good factors that I'm proud to call him a friend. And when we first started talking and I was pressuring him, because this is me, this is not him. This is me pressuring somebody to step outside of their comfort zone and do something to share information, right? To convey and educate. Because I hate to say it, guys, our society right now is full of a lot of dum-dums and it's not their fault. True education is a rarity. But if you look at humans, the best way that we learn is by other people. People that have walked that walk, talked that talk, it done it. So Cyrus has had a very successful business for a long period of time. I, as the opposite, have had many ventures that I've started, none of which have really ever sprouted the crops that I had hoped for. Some of them kind of knocked me down and humbled me and made me go, woo. But every single one of them, I learned. And that goes with the, uh, the topic we talked about the other day about the blade not penetrating the hood, but the blade didn't break. So as long as you're stepping forward and you're learning, you're never really failing. So anyway, Cyrus is going to be, because I'm forcing him to basically, creating a YouTube presence and I'm gonna help him produce videos and get his message out. I'll probably have him do a few more of these to um, kind of get his toes wet, you know, put in a, you know, just, just to get used to this. Cause this is a real intimidating thing. If you haven't shot videos, this could be really kind of hard on you. It can mess with you a little bit. Cause I don't care. Like, you know, shit I talk to you guys about all the time. It's no big deal. But to have somebody come in and say, okay, sit there and do that. He's going to be like, and I think he did a pretty good job. What do you guys think? So in the comments below, let me know what you guys think. Uh, start formulating some questions that you might be thinking about. As I get questions from you, I can do more of the Q&A with him. And we'll do a few more of these episodes. And then I'll help him get his studio set up. And, you know, because obviously this is not conducive to the conversation. But I think he has a lot of valuable information that we can all share and learn from. All right, guys, that's it for now. If you like it, like it, please subscribe. Tell all your friends. Until next time, please be good to each other.